Okay, so let's move to the second section of the of the your exam. So in this sec second section, they are going to ask you. There will be five questions, right? And then from the five questions, they ask you to answer three out of the five questions. Now, this particular section will cover um, monarchy in Israel. So the story of um, how Israel, um, how God gave them king. And then they ask you questions on those prophets, Amos, uh, prophet Isaiah, prophet Osia. So I usually advise my students to make sure that they know at least two prophets. Everything about the two of those prophets. Either you pick Osia and Amos, or you pick Amos and Isaiah. All you need to know is that how were they called, what was the assignment God gave them, who did God send them to. You need to pay attention to all those things. That is, those are the things they are going to ask you. So now, regarding the rise of monarchy in Israel, like I said, a quick recap. I think I did a video on those topics, so you can check my page for the other videos. So now, this historical setting started with Elkanah and Anna, Penina, how God gave Anna a child and then uh, Anna vowed to give it to God and he actually did. So moving on, they can ask you to talk about how the Philistines captured the Ark of God. Remember how um, Israel went out to battle against the Philistines? You know God already told Eli that he was going to punish him and then his children were going to die on the same day and this was what happened at the uh the battle with the philistines and that was how the, the ark was captured because eli's children Ophni and finas were the one with the hack and then the ark was captured also um, after that topic we have they can ask you to talk about the role of samuel as priest judge and prophet in israel so you should be able to so now let's say they ask you this question you must be able to give instances how samuel served as a priest how samuel served as a judge and also how samuel served as a prophet so let me just quickly look at this briefly so samuel work as a prophet began with his first assignment from the lord to confirm to eli the message of condemnation you know and judgment and also talking about being a judge samuel wrote a great deliverance you know what the judge does so when you want to approach that question you try to explain who a prophet is you know foretells the future a judge they try to uh, solve dispute between people so how did samuel do that give instances then talking about um samuel as a as a priest we know what priests do they offer sacrifices to god talk about how samuel did that you know here in, in the text book i mentioned that where people gathered at mispah they were surrounded by the philistines but samuel offered sacrifice as a priest to the lord and continued to pray so samuel sat in those three roles you know in israel and very quickly moving on we move to the establishment of monarchy under samuel so you are going to talk about here in case they ask you a question how samuel appointed um, a king over um you know over Israel and they can ask you that what are the factors that led to the request for a king yes they can ask you so what are the factors that led to the request for a king let me just brush through it um, quickly so you know that the Israelites requested for a king because nations that surround the um, surrounded them they had kings over them so they also want to be like those people you get they want to be like them. they, they want to have kings over them and there are other other reasons why they want to have kings over them so make sure you are prepared for that right i um, i'm not sure if i could um add, uh, if i created a video on that but you can check but if i do not have a video on that you can quickly check online and prepare yourself for that question so moving on we have saul anointed as first king so they can ask you to talk about how saul was called one thing you need to pay attention to you can easily narrate the story but you need to pay attention to what are the three signs Samuel told Saul that Saul was going to to see on his way what are those three signs you should take note of the three signs right so because those are the things that you know they are the things that count right the inauguration of Saul at Giga how Saul was chosen you know at Giga and then you should be able to mention the success of Saul's reign what are the things that Saul did well you know and then um the factor that led to the fall of Saul, disobedience impatience envy she be able to explain and when they ask you you must be able to give examples now let me tell you one thing about being an advanced level student of crs they believe that most of the students that sit for crs exam they are christians right you already have a foster knowledge of this story but there is the advanced level part that someone that goes to church might not know there are some details that you as an advanced level student should know those are the details that i need you to pay attention to do you get 
all right so very quickly let's move on to um, the next one david's reign over israel so here you talk about how david was anointed out um god told Samuel to go to uh the house of jesse to to anoint i remember Samuel said he can't go because he saw you know it will be so can kill him and god told him to what he told him to carry an ephah you should not forget that you know so that it, it, it won't look like it was going to anoint so make sure you study that okay and also talk about how um um god punished david you know what david did when david killed uriah remember the punishment god gave him and how everything turned upside down that he lost his children to different you know circumstances absalom died because uh of the civil war between him you know and david adonijah also died because he wanted to take the throne away from solomon all those stories how have not died because he wanted to sleep with uh the steps uh um, his stepsister you should know that so take pay attention to that all right and then moving on what are the what were the achievements of king david what was david able to achieve you know and then talking about the weaknesses of king david should be able to to you know should know that as well so what our advice is that this is not the time to start carrying textbooks now you can do like a, a, a group reading with your friends and just ask questions you know you, I believe that you've studied for your exam so this is just us doing revision together so you can do that with your friends and then you ask yourself oh yeah what are the things that um, David did what are the weaknesses of David so you can do that okay and then moving on we have the Solomon's accession to the throne as Solomon got to the throne what were the things that David instructed him to do remember David told him to kill Abner told him to um what's it called now the name of this priest Abiathar that he shouldn't be among the his priests the the people got um david told him to uh, reward all those things you should pay attention to to them okay and quickly we this question usually you should you should pay attention to it it usually comes out king solomon's contribution to israel solomon did a lot to israel right you should pay attention to that you know in, in my textbook i mentioned how he signed bilateral treaty with king iram of child he controlled the red sea trade he controlled and redirected to Arabian traders. He established a copper industry. You should know all those things. Also, we have he built military bases. You know, he married princesses from the nations that surround Israel. I don't. I want this video to. I don't want it to be long, rather. So I'm trying to rush through. So talking about all those things Solomon did, you know, then then King Solomon's folly. They can ask you to talk about the foolishness of Solomon. What did Solomon do? So you already know the things that he did wrongly, you know. So I mentioned in this text that he introduced every taxation. He also introduced forced labor. He organized labor gangs, you know, and so many things that he did. He introduced the worship of foreign gods, married several wives, you know, and they turned him against God. So quickly, I have questions here. You can pause it, you know, you can pause the video, write out the questions. You and your friends can come together and just quickly do a revision on it before the time for your exam. So most of the questions here are the popular questions, like the questions that they often, they are the repeats often. Those are the questions that are actually brought out here. So that should help you. And then uh, moving on very quickly. We have the role of prophet in the United Kingdom. So yeah, they, they can ask questions on prophet of Eli prophet Elijah. You know how Elijah was able to uh, stop the worship of Baal for a while during his own period. You know the, the um, how he killed those prophets at Mount Carmel. You should know that story. All right, know it like an advanced level Shire student. And moving on, we have Elisha. Elisha did so many things, a lot of miracles. So at least you must know close to five miracles that he did. You know, how he turned um, water to a bitter water to a good water, how he saved the prophet that were living in with him, how uh, the axe that was borrowed, how he brought it up, all those things. You should, you should be able to know all the miracles that um, Elisha did. All right. So look at the questions I got from explain the event from the prophet Elijah declaration of drought to his announcement of rain and learn God's miracles through prophet Elisha. Okay, so moving on, the divided kingdoms and the exile. So 
I don't think for IGMB they can ask you that. Most times it come out in Jupeb exam. So let's just quickly focus on the next thing. So the next topics that we have for IGMB, we have um, the the prophet Osia, Isaiah, and then we have um, Amos. So you should be able to know. You know, Amos was sent to Israel, to to Israel rather, and he was also sent to Israel neighboring countries. So you should know that what were the uh, instruction God gave Amos. Exactly. What the instruction God gave him was mention the sins they committed and how God planned to punish them. Right? I'm trying to scroll down to the the place where we have where I have the note on Amos. Alright, so okay, this, this started with Isaiah. So Isaiah's call, how Jesus called him, what were the things that happened? You should be able to know that, you know, and also um talking about the things God told, so you know, we call Isaiah like prophet of what you should know that prophet. His core message was holiness. The people should live a holy life. And what were the things God told him that the Israelites were doing? So you can't mix the sin up. For example, look at Amos' story now. God told him, the God told Amos that the Israelite tramples the head of the poor. You can't mix it up with Isaiah because the person marking your script knows quite well that you already mixed it up. So take your time. You know, you can even do like, um, you know, this code that we use, ABBA. You can use something like, okay, Isaiah's, um, the sin that the Israelites committed during the time of Isaiah was sin of this, 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 this. The time of Amos, sin of this, this, this. Have, it, have a code for it so that you will not mix them up. That is very, 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 very important, okay? It's very important. All right, so also moving on. I, I think I did a video on all this prophet. You can check it out. It's, I don't want this to be quite long, but I already know the things you should focus on. And then Osia, Osia story, Osia married a harlot. What are the symbolic me, um, the names, the names of of, the, of their children? What does it symbolize? And then what did Israelite do? All those things you should pay attention to them. Okay, so this question should guide you right on Isaiah the prophet. So when as you are you know revising now, carry your paper and your pen. Right on Isaiah the prophet. Try to check what's in your head about Isaiah the prophet. You realize that what you have put down is not enough point. That is time for you to get more things. Check your note, check your textbook, and add to it. Whatever you can practice while writing down, when you get to the exam, it's very easy for you to remember them. Then describe the call of prophet Isaiah as it's recorded in Isaiah 6. Practice that who was the man prophet Amos. That means they want you to talk about prophet Amos, the assignment God gave him, where is it from, and all that. Then what chart the prophet Amos level against the nation Israel? Do you get that's what I mentioned earlier. and then look at this other one identify the nations which Amos address pointing out their crimes so you should be able to do that all right I think that's that will be all basically okay there's this part of judgment against the nations which talk more about Isaiah's um you know Isaiah's um ministry right but if you can just pay attention to those major things I'll talk about you can pick between David's you can pick with David and Solomon, or you pick David and Saul. Make sure you know their story very well. You should be able to explain it quite well. And then, out of those two prophets, the prophet, pick two out of them. Know it very well. You already know the likely questions they will ask. And I promise you are good to go. So, like I said in the last video, if you are not writing your exam today, and you have some topics that probably your lecturer did not touch, and you like me to do a video on, you can just comment below. And if you also want to get this textbook that I'm using to teach, I'll drop my number in the description box. You can chat me up on WhatsApp and then I'll see how the test we can get to you. All right. Have a lovely day. Bye.